Hello again Strokwap, today we will be discussing Torchlight 3, this is another video for the early access of the game and it will be a beginner's guide which should be useful to new players and to old ones that might be returning after a long break and are not familiarized with some of the new systems and changes that were uh, brought over the last few months. Uh, I'm gonna try and make this as extensive as possible so you might wanna check the description below for timestamps of all the different things that this guide would cover such as itemization, legendarium skills, and respecting relics, uh, pets and their pet skills, forts, wardrobes and stash, uh, uh, enchanting and recipes, the tree of work, the monuments, the gathering materials and the crafting as well as uh, information about upcoming uh, updates uh, within the early access phase that they have already confirmed such as uh, returning uh, the reworked act 3 and the Fazir Shaz Dun uh, Jin, which will be the name of something uh, that they will review eventually as an endgame replacement to Mapworks. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this is a guide that you would enjoy and let's start off with the first subject. And before moving on to the first subject I mentioned, I quickly wanted to put one more important information that many of you might not know. There is something called difficulty badges. And you're seeing in the background the character selection while I'm talking about this, you can see different character selection options, hairstyles, uh, skin tone and uh, um, head options like facial options and so on. So while we are showing you those, uh, keep in mind that when you create a character you, sele you select the difficulty you want to play on. And there is something called difficulty badges that are kind of like... Uh, visual representations of the the lowest difficulty a character has played so if you start on ridiculous on the highest difficulty and never go to any lower difficulty people would see this you can also see there's hardcore options as well and people would be able to see this and this is kind of like uh, for bragging rights and just so you can say hey i've never played this character on an easy difficulty i i've done that only on the hardest uh, and that's something that people would be able to see in town when they run around you. So keep that in mind when creating a character if you really want to benefit from this kind of uh, bragging rights and uh, visual representation of different badges, you might want to, to change the difficulty you start on to the one you want to keep playing uh, until the end. So it is the highest difficulty you have, uh, the lowest difficulty you have played. So if ridiculous is the lowest you've played, that's what they're gonna see. If at any time you think, okay, I, I, I'm done with it, I don't want the ridiculous badge, and you just change it to a different one, then that's the badge you would see uh, because it would be lower than ridiculous. So keep that in mind when creating a hero, and hopefully this was useful info to you folks. And next uh, I will start with the, the first important subject which I think would be the items. I thought it would be best to start this guide with a little bit of information about the itemization and how the item system works in Torchlight 3. First of all, you have three pet items which would be a cower, uh, which is a tag and another tag. The tags can be uh, the same, it's like uh, two, two, two of the same thing. You don't have a left one, the right one, so you can just uh, put them whenever. The cover wherever um, is like for the pet snack and this one normally contains the defensive bonuses and those ones contain the offensive bonuses. So that's the only three pet items. And later uh, in the guide I would tell you more in detail about pets and uh, what skills and abilities they can use to help us. So now let's talk about the main uh, items for our character. You can equip uh, on most characters with some exceptions. Uh, uh, you can equip a weapon and offhand and the forge. The forge has a cannon as well which is separate in their skills that benefit from uh, cannon damage. But uh, the other characters just have a weapon and offhand. You can have two handed which forbid you from equipping an offhand but the offhand can be a shield or a focus item and focus items uh, normally would be for a build that allows you to be more spammy with your skills uh, on the mana it gives me mana regeneration on this one it gives me ammo regeneration uh, on the realm master it would be it would be endurance regeneration on the forged uh, that would mean uh, it would be 
team dissipation. So each of the heroes has certain mechanics centered around uh, uh, around a specific resource and they can regenerate that resource. So at best maybe we can just call it uh, resource generation if we refer to it uh, uh, again. So you have the resource generation on the focus items, but of course they can both come with uh, some offensive or defensive bonuses. Shields kind of always come with a built-in block chance. At the top you can see each item has a built-in bonus. And legendary items on top of having built-in bonuses have special abilities and a flavor text uh, for some of them. This one has... Uh, uh, basic attack override this uh, kind of <laughs> uh, flavor text but basically what this one does is uh, the special ability of that one is launch up to three sna snaking poison boats each dealing 40 weapon damage which would mean if I were to replace this skill with a basic attack and start using basic attacks this thing happens so that's just a perfect example of what could happen and now if I have a different uh, I don't have a different staff, but let's see, I maybe have one in my warehouse that I could show you. Um, staffs normally use uh, basic attacks in melee range. They are fast attacking melee range weapons, but are two-handed. So basically, I, I don't have another staff to show you, but I can show you a different weapon uh, with the basic attack. You can see kind of what uh, basic attacks are. You've got uh, different types. You've got pistols, you've got rifles as ranged. And you've got different melee ones, swords, maces, uh, you don't have axes yet, maybe they might hunt them, maybe they won't, we'll see. Um, you have great uh, weapons, which is kind of the great swords, you have uh, rail hammers, which is exclusive to rail masters, you have bows, exclusive to to this hero, to the, to the sharpshooter. You also have uh, things like, uh, uh, what should we call it? Uh, I'm gonna try and show you some more things, just a second. You have a Digitus. I wanted to try and show you a Digitus, but I can't show you that right now, I guess. Uh, the Dismage has a Digitus, which allows you to use mid-range uh, attack. Um, kind of like a Nether, Nether or Spectro, you could call it, like a ghastly hand that stretches out. I'm gonna include some footage of me using that uh, in this video as we're speaking about this so hopefully you're seeing it right now and uh, yeah definitely there are options uh, regarding picking your weapon but what are weapons? First of all weapons sometimes might uh, be what you go for as a basic attack build but then you might end up just using them as stat sticks weapons and offhands you might end up using as stat sticks if you are not using basic attacks so keep that in mind uh, for certain builds that's how it's gonna be a stat stick then you have your helmet shoulders chest piece uh, gauntlets boots legs six pieces of armor and there's set items. Set items that you need three pieces to get the set bonus of. So you kind of have to decide which three pieces you might want to use. Do you, do you want to use all the other pieces? Or do you want to use three pieces of one set and three pieces of the other set? And maybe three more pieces uh, of a third set and put those into a legendarium. Or maybe you might want to wear some things from one set and put the others in the legendarium but unfortunately that right now does not allow us to get the set bonuses I think it might be a bug and hopefully it gets um, fixed so that I can equip for example two pieces of the musketeer set here and then have one more piece in my legendarium and then still get the bonus counted the set bonus when wearing three of the sets now I'm a big fan of having only three pieces needed for a set uh, bonus because uh, the game is not telling you hey you better be wearing the full set of this or your skills and builds would be trash. No that's not how it is. They wanted to avoid uh, um, re removing freedom uh, of builds from us. This game has a lot of depth and variety that most people probably won't see and hopefully throughout this guide you would see um, about this. So there's various things that can draw on items, uh, things from um, resource generation, uh, gear work, uh, crit chance, crit damage, uh, defense, I'm gonna talk about defenses in a moment, uh, um, you can get uh, basic types of damage, you can get flat damage or percent damage of a certain element, uh, you can get potion work, gold work, uh, HP, 
so there's a lot of a lot of things that you can draw on an item. Pet items uh, come with pet attack speed, pet health regen. Uh, of course, they have the pet flat damage and chance for the pet to block. Uh, so there are things that you can get. You can get chance to fear, chance to immobilize, uh, chance to stun, freeze, knock back. So you've got all those uh, different things. You have blind duration, bleed duration, poison duration, chance to poison, chance to bleed, chance to burn, chance to uh, shock. Uh, there's uh, uh, an affix that allows you to to proc shock bolts when you hit shocked enemies. There's things that increase the duration of certain skills, that de decrease the cooldown of certain skills. That decrease the cooldown of relic active skill and relic acti active skill is uh, the skill that you can put in your uh, in your skill bar. Each relic has one of, uh, of this. Uh, I'm using an item that allows me to cast one more relic skill when I'm using my spider. So you can see I'm kind of... Uh, mm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk more about this in relics. Um, in the relic segment. So there's a cooldown decrease for the relic skill, uh, which is this one, which you can uh, cast. It lasts for a few seconds and then it has, normally it has long cooldown. More about this again in the relic segment. Some, some relics have shorter cooldowns, uh, but longer uh, relic skill cooldowns and, uh, and it's just you have to decide whether you want to be going for using relic active skill or whether you want to be using uh, um, the relic regular skill and then which one you want to focus on gathering cooldown reduction for. So gear wise uh, you have white items, you have uh, then the magic one which is the green ones, uh, then you have uh, the blue ones which are rare and then you have legendary which as I said come with special abilities. I will talk about the legendary and how you can uh, use up to three of those things uh, the same way you can in Diablo 3 in the Kanai Cube put some certain items powers. You can do the same here with those. It's it's a very fit system for that game. It fits perfectly well into into the world of Torchlight 3 in, in the way this is uh, kind of uh, made. So so I think. Even though people would say, oh, this is copying Diablo 3, it works. If it works in this game, I think it's a great addition to it. It makes sense to have a Legendarium in this game. Um, and it definitely is a nice system. So, let's quickly check what else uh, you might need to know about the items. First of all, they come with sockets and enchanting. Um, and uh, they can have up to three sockets, as you can see this one is with three. So in those sockets you can put different stats, which you get from recipes. Uh, so more about that in a moment. Another important uh, subject uh, that we might want to talk about are wife bound items. What are wife bound items, uh, what to do with them and uh, what is the benefit and the uh, cons from wife bound items first you can end up reading a little bit more about it here and what it says officially is wife bound item items are enhanced items that can be equipped like normal items however all wife bound items in your possession are permanently lost if you should ever fall in battle and you can use a scroll of unbinding to prevent a wife bound item from being lost on death what do those scrolls look like how to get them they look like this and you get them mostly from bosses. You mostly get those from bosses. Sometimes um, when when they add the contracts, you would be able to get those from contracts. So you would want to be farming uh, end of act bosses or bosses like uh, the, the the named enemies like uh, White Wolf, uh, uh, Strong Tusk, uh, Kronk, uh, and uh, Psora and so on. So those should have a higher chance of dropping. How much higher, how easier it is. Um, they're probably gonna make this easier to get and they're probably gonna nerf the drop rates of wife bounds because they seem to be dropping a bit too much. Um, and many have been saying that. So you use one of those scrolls to unbind an item and that item becomes uh, the regular but it still retains the wife bound uh, strength and a wife bound items is 20% stronger than a non wife bound item of the exact same rarity quality and stats 
So if I had the same magical venomous uh, scimitar at level 32, this 324 poison damage would have been 20% less, and probably the the chance to poison would uh, would have rolled with uh, lower brackets within the numbers. So the duration, the chance, and the base would have had lower brackets most likely. But the base thing that's super important is the the the, the innate damage, the innate damage, the innate armor, defenses, etc. Of those are the ones that are 20% stronger. So there is. Eventually, at the end, when you reach level 60, once re level 60 is reasonably easy to reach, because right now you don't have the end game monsters and activities other than phase beast farming, which is <laughs> it's gonna be boring uh, in Wobby zones to farm phase beasts. So, once you're level 60 and you get a super nice item that you think damn i really want that one that's that's the legendary item i want but it's also life bound it's got good rows uh you say yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna use a scroll of unbinding unbind this item and that's gonna be my my next um, item to to use for a long long time for this build that's kind of how they would end up fitting into the end game into into your builds you would want to get stronger wifebound versions of the items you use with good stats and then unbind them. It's simple, it's not anything that difficult, but when you die you lose every wifebound item that's in your bags or equipped. So one thing you could do if you really think you want that wifebound item that, for example, you get two very good wifebound weapons and you don't think you would be out leveling those soon you can chuck one into the warehouse and then wear the other one once this other one breaks you can go back grab the other one that was spare um, that's one thing you can do another thing just keep a regular spare weapon like i normally do i keep a regular spare weapon uh, or so on for example i'm wearing non wife bound stuff right now but if i find a new better uh, one-handed weapon i'm gonna chug it like that other sword use it and i'm gonna put this one here and once the other one breaks if I die, and when I die, because for me it's not about if but when, when I die I'm just gonna put my old one back uh, up here. But some people take it up a notch and just put uh, extra wife bound here in the storage, but I think this is gonna be okay for when you stop actually leveling up. For now, you're gonna be out leveling a wife bound item within 4, 5, 6 levels maybe. And if you've just started... Uh, and that's going to be very quick. Within an hour or two, you probably would have uh, outleveled uh, an item by a very big uh, margin. Now let's talk about the Legendarium. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about the Legendarium. As I said, uh, you can see that it allows you to, to use certain passive uh, skills or abilities uh, of a certain Legendary item. Up to three of those. Uh, and you get... A certain set of legendary items by default when you start a new account or, or a new character and those items this legendarium all, all the things you've unlocked apply to the whole account they're not character bound so you can you can use whatever you want on the whole account so as you get items you dismantle those those mentals uh, those items you dismantle and once you do dismantle them you get their abilities you dismantle them here in the in the altar, in the in the enchanter's altar. So I'm just gonna dismantle one of those, and then I'm gonna show you more dismantling later in the in the segment uh, where I'm talking more about the enchanter. So here I've encha disenchanted this, but this was not a legendary one, so it wouldn't give me an ability. But if it wasn't legendary, I would receive a message that I've unlocked the legendary power and then you can list uh, you can see a list of all those legendary powers here there's 104 legendary items right now in the game probably with more to come with more legendary powers but each of them has something special some of the items you can only wear on your class uh, such as uh, the ones in this section so whatever class you pick you can click on that icon and then you can see that. And by the way, how you access this, you, this, you press C, um, which is for your character. And then you go over here. Actually, it's not C. Um, it's, it's you press S. S for skills. And then you go over here at the end. And then at level 3, you unlock the first SWAT. At level 20, you unlock the second SWAT. At level 40, you unlock the third SWAT. 
and um, as you can see there's some weird things uh, like this one egg of wonder which uh, is a very great item uh, i just mentioned earlier that it allows me to cast a certain skill when i cast my relic active skill uh, so basically the description might be a little bit confusing uh, what needs to be included between relic and skill is active because uh, the relic skill uh, normally in this game uh, throughout all different places refers to the skill that we activate the big one uh, and the one that is with a shorter cooldown is called relic active skill and this one allows you when you cast your relic active skill to cast another so you see i'm casting my venom small but i'm casting randomly different ones so sometimes it would be the whitening relics one the fire relics one the bleeding relic the ice relic so i'm kind of randomly casting one more of those and this is uh, great just for dps for uh, the crowd control of the blue one it's just of the cold one it's pretty nice so as you gather those items uh, for example you get you find a nice legendary but it's for example life bound and you're afraid you might lose it when you die uh, and you'd rather have the ability because you you want to use that ability well then you uh go and salvage it with the enchanter and then you get the ability or for example you find something great and you use it uh, from level 8 to level 18 and but now it's it's 10 levels um, lower than than what you need and the dps it gives you is bad or the defense it gives you is bad and you kind of feel like it's time to say goodbye to that one and uh, get rid of it well you're not really getting rid of it you're just dis disenchanting it and you're unlocking the ability to use in the in the legendarium so you can see there's weapons armors and pets uh, to allow you for faster searching and there's ones that's class specific but you can also browse them all you start with a few frenzy's blade god's beard's glove headhunter uh, i think you also start with quicksilver and i think you also start with the wanderer's hood uh, all the rest uh, you see here are things I have unlocked myself. So that's not, not a small amount of things to start with. Uh, if we count them it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 abilities I think uh, is what we start with. Uh, if I'm not mistaking something here. So there's various ones. Some that give you relic skill. When you use it to get some fire charges and then using basic attacks to spend the fire charges. And this one goes very well with the firewall. Uh, so there's like a combo you might want firewall and uh, and fire starter for a basic attack bit. For a summoner build you might want uh, the bomb walker and bone razor which allows you to summon 3 plus 3 plus 4 skeletons when you use your relic. And again it says to use your relic not the relic active skill. So that means... Uh, you might want to to do something uh, like in decreasing the cooldown of that relic uh, so that uh, you can be spamming this more often and there's ways to do that and uh, more in more on relics in the relic segment but uh, i can just say that some relics come with shorter relic cooldown others with shorter relic skill cooldown again so keep that in mind you might want to uh, be using specific item with specific relics because they they might make more sense you can see the maestro sword using basic attacks at full hp also fires a blade of force dealing 70 percent weapon damage to enemies there's there's different things there are things that are currently broken but it's early access keep in mind the most important thing you need to set your mind uh, into that uh, into that state where you know that this is early access you know that there's going to be broken things unfinished things and things that uh, might uh, end up getting removed or reworked or so on so it's early access things are subject to change nothing is set in stone uh, so what is happening right now would probably be end up ending up getting different in a few months so keep that in mind as well then there's the pet items immunities and stuff like that uh, or using uh, when pet, the pet uses an active skill it gets uh, to do something like a shock nova fire nova and this is nice because you have items you can synergize with them that uh, reduces the cooldown of the pets and see that that's an enough enough uh, customization to allow and open up some builds um, as you saw there's this one that modifies the basic attack but then there's things uh, like the summoning ones then there's uh, 
things that are just uh, giving you something like more movement speed or or this one as I showed you with the relic and this one has a chance to drop stalactites from the from the sky uh, and hit the enemies and this one allows you to do some chain whitening uh, so definitely a lot of stuff especially the class specific ones are the ones you want to be looking into when making a build with the class specific ones for example my build is using consult with summons on this on this uh, uh, class so i would want the one that modifies my own sword or i would want the one that modifies my royal shasta because i'm using shasta uh, to town the enemies so I can get on swat on them easily while they're grouped up uh, next to my pet so for example I would prefer to use storm driver because I think my pets can survive I've got goblins I've got spiders I've got my wolf and uh, they keep my enemies in place where my uh, wolf is taunting them the wolf makes them take more damage so I have the opportunity to spam on swat so that's just one one uh, thing that you can consider another one is you can allow certain things to auto cast other things like this one any precision has a skill has a chance to fire ha a scarred seeker then you have a scatter shot based uh, item amazing then you have something about goblin legion now also summon three ghostly gunners another inter interesting thing for a summoner but again it's two-handed so you probably won't be able to to figure out some sort of way to to combine goblin stuff with shasta stuff so with the shasta stuff you get the shield and then you have to find a, a decent weapon and the game unfortunately seems to offer you weapons and that are unique like this pistol that are one-handed or this pistol but those might be for different builds uh, some weird uh, combinations and there's a lot of weird combinations you can make which would all be viable what I've noticed here, builds make things easier, but builds, synergized meta builds are not necessary to do the hardest content the game can offer you. So even the more casual players would enjoy having fun. Yeah, they're not gonna be probably 1, 2, 3 shotting stuff, they're not gonna be melting bosses in seconds and might take a minute or two. But that doesn't mean that uh, the build they're playing is completely bad. No, it's not. Yeah, it's not min-maxed, it's not synergized to, to perfection, but uh, that's still good enough. So this is uh, a nice layer of customization, having three uh, items placed here on top of the other items that you're wearing. Uh, and this provides a lot of depth. It might not look like much, but uh, it opens up a lot of uh, build possibilities. Uh, it allows you to use uh, certain... certain things that are the same type of item and require some sets. For example, on my mage, I want to be using one set uh, shoulder that allows me to summon netherlings when I use my relic, uh, this type of relic skill. Uh, and then there's another set of shoulder from another set uh, that allows me to summon goblin hounds. And uh, the only way to get those would probably be to put three pieces of one set uh, equipped and to put the other three pieces of the other set in the legendarium. And then I can get uh, those bonuses for a summoner build. So that just opens some possibilities. I think we talked uh, a lot about, um, about the legendarium. So maybe let's move on to the skills, respects and all of that. And this brings us to the skills and respect system. First, I'm not gonna talk about relics right away. I'm gonna talk about relic skills and relics in a moment. But each character has two skill trees. You can invest into any skill tree at any time. As you level up, you get rewarded respectacles at certain thresholds. Uh, I think they are saying something around every five levels you get them. I couldn't test uh, myself, but... Uh, I seem to have only 3 on this hero by reaching level 30, so it could be every 10 levels or it could be at level 5 and then 15 and then 25 every 10 levels. In any case you do get them uh, as you level up at certain thresholds, I don't know the exact thresholds though. Then from your fort you can build skill stations and more about how to build stuff in, and, and uh, more about the fort uh, in a different segment but I'm gonna show you what happens when I go to to one of those stations so I can do this I can click on a skill and respect it by wasting a respectacle point I will not do it right now but um, 
but keep in mind as you click here you respect one skill by reducing its skill level by one people probably would uh, say that that is similar to the orb of regret in path of exile and they may not be wrong this is a, a nice way of handling uh, skill respects yeah some people might prefer full respects uh, and uh, we did have full respects before the respectacle system was here every week or two they would give us a free of charge a full respect so we can try more builds and give them feedback about those speaking of builds we are gonna speak about the skills in a moment i'm just gonna show you what the respectacle looks like uh, if i've got one i don't think i can show you one because i think they immediately got, get at it but they look something like goggles like uh, like pirates uh, steampunk kind of goggles so so keep that in mind uh, now let's talk about the skills first so you can see there's two skill trees and uh, investing into into a skill has um, the possibility to give you one two or three bonuses based on whether you spent three six or ten points into that skill so tier one tier two tier three taking three six or ten skill points invested into the skill so normally how skills work is first it would give you a bonus for the skill at tier one that's kind of what happens in most cases uh, uh, when you're investing into the skill to get the tier one bonus uh, i think every skills tier one bonus is a modifier for that skill um, there might be some some exceptions but uh, but i don't think so i don't think so i think every single one uh, from the tier one is a bonus for this skill then the tier two bonus is something uh, that boosts uh, either a different skill or gives you some sort of a modification um, that can happen to the character uh, or it uh, it gives you some bonus passive bonus for the whole character for example this 65 pet damage you only boost the pet it doesn't boost the goblins it doesn't boost the spider summons it doesn't boost the uh, royal shasta those don't classify as pets but the developers are considering uh, reducing that number there maybe from 65 to 30 maybe to 20 maybe to 40 maybe 35 we don't know but they're considering reducing that number and making it apply to our summons like the goblin legion like the shasta like the spellcaster netherim caster here from Rizzi's fate like the the bane's spiders which would be uh, those spiders here so keep that in mind things uh, would be changing and there's those weird things that boost up so you have this one giving you relic active skill cooldown which uh, gets this cooldown uh, pretty well then you have this relic active skill damage which again boosts this one to do more damage um, then you have things like that one 10 percent chance to return ammo on kill for precision skills so if i kill someone with this skill i get ammo back killing a cursed enemy now returns 10 ammo this is specific for this cursed so there's just those things uh, and then 50 percent increased damage to taunted enemies first you can taunt enemies with royal shasta and then there was one more uh, skill i remember uh, somewhere here that allowed you to taunt enemies kind of need to check where it was but i'm pretty sure there was uh, there was some uh, some way to to taunt enemies other than shasta i can check which one it was i guess but but uh, there there was something else there was a way to get uh, taunt without having to to use shasta maybe it was an item maybe it was an item but in any case uh, look you can see how how certain things can synergize so when you're using this you're kind of uh, deciding do you want to just uh, get the duration do you want to get the duration in the town or do you even want to get her do that burning area around her um, and there's so much uh, so much uh, build variety that people might uh, be discounting yes you only have four skills and two mouse click skills and m some people might be used to playing the piano instead of playing a game some people might want two skill bars three skill bars but that belongs in mmos this is hack and slash rpg uh, and i don't think a hack and slash rpg necessarily needs 10 or 8 skills in the skill bar i'm 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 thinking that six here is the perfect balance of not having too many things at once and trying to probably just get the school downs down and have a nice rotation instead of uh, spamming skills um, 
then your other skill is ready and you're you're kind of losing dps because you're not using that other skill which is ready so you you kind of have to make choices first you only have max level 60 which means 60 points to consider with 60 points co to consider you're still gonna be able to spend points in more than six skills uh, but the others would be just for the passive bonuses so I think this makes us make hard choices, this makes us think do I want to invest into this skill, do I want to invest into the other skill and it still provides us with uh, some build variety. Someone might invest into reward which is an amazing skill, someone might want to invest into targeted strikes which is also an amazing skill especially combined with reward but others might want to also uh, use hard seeker or others like me might want to be using console because they're going for an AUE summoner build and they want the enemies to be standing in circle around my pet. Um, so that I can just uh, rain um, some onslaught on top of them while spamming Venomous Maw which spams other uh, relics. So there's uh, there's the build variety and this was definitely a viable good build. Maybe it might not be doing as much damage as a targeted strikes build but um, but then you have scatter shot. Scatter shot was amazing before they reworked it. Now it's kind of so so. It's still good. It still does a lot of damage. But before we had the ability to use ghost visage, that gives us 50% uh, uh, crit chance on the next uh, three uses of a uh, of a precision skill. And I used to use scatter shot because it didn't have cooldown. I used to use it three times. Um, then teleport again, use this three times, maybe teleport uh, again and use it a few more times, then reload, which recharges my ghost visage and then I can start repeating this uh, rotation. This was a fun build, it's no longer possible, <laughs> Oops, uh, unless, uh, unless you can, unless you can uh, get the cooldown to at least two seconds or one second of this, but it's still not going to be possible to get it to zero seconds, so they kind of broke the most fun build in the game I've seen since April 2019 by adding cooldown to this skill um, but it opened up some other builds so, so people can experiment with things even like explosive arrow I've never used explosive arrow but it could end up being nice so every every hero has the exact same things I talked about I can probably make uh, some uh, videos about each hero eventually I mean I'm planning on doing that as soon as I get them all leveled up and I have all the skills uh, uh, mastered and so on so that's gonna take a while, but I hope it was clear about the skills and um, and how to respect them. And next we are gonna talk about uh, relics. So here we are at the relic query and I'm gonna quickly show you all the different relics. First you've got Bane. Bane has Miasma. It's a poison based uh, relic, uh, so activating Bane allows you to have chance to poison uh, enemies for X damage over 4 seconds, a poison storm surrounds you that poisons enemies for 50% uh, weapon damage at a 25% damage buff is shared to all allies in the area. This 25% damage buff is amazing and it's not just to you, to the whole team. Then you have Venomous Maw which is a skill on cooldown, it's with an 8 second base cooldown but when you max it out you get it to 4 seconds. And if you have some more items like uh, the tw or some some more passive cooldown reduction, like uh, I got passive cooldown reduction from investing into a certain skill, and eventually you see I've got this down to 1.5 seconds. If you stack some more uh, cooldown reduction for the relic active skill, you might end up getting this down to one second or zero point something, maybe even zero, and then just be able to spam it instead of a basic attack or instead of your other skills and just uh, center a build around it. Uh, see, weird builds like that are possible. Whether th everything would be fun and it won't be boring to keep spamming Venom small as much uh, remains to be seen. I like it around one, one and a half seconds so I can still kind of use other things to proc other different uh, things in between. So one, one and a half seconds is not a bad cooldown for me, but you might want to try and experiment with the zero second uh, setup. So you can increase the damage by 5% per point and you can increase the, the cooldown by 5% per point. You get relic points as you get uh, XP as you kill stuff and the relic uh, goes up to level 50. So as you get XP yourself the relic also gets XP. You can unequip it, put it in the stash, uh, take it on out that you started leveling and use the already leveled one on an out. And uh, that makes things a little bit easier. 
Uh, and since the legendarium is shared across uh, the account, if you have things that you can synergize like the Egg of Wonder I showed you in the um, legendarium segment, uh, you can definitely have uh, some easier time leveling in the first few levels uh, on a new hero, unless that hero is forged or realm master I guess. And they are still a little bit weaker in the first few levels uh, when playing on ridiculous, but they become very strong later on uh, with some of the changes. Next, Spread of Death allows you to shoot uh, some, some kind of poisoned projectiles in four directions, up, down, left, right from a certain enemy when you hit a poisoned enemy. And you have a way to add uh, some extra damage, plus 5% up to plus 50 when maxed out and this is plus 2.5% chance uh, which uh, uh, adds up another 25 to make it 55% uh, chance so you can get it to 55% chance and to 95% damage this is a pretty nice one for builds like the spin to win build on the forged or the rapid strike or rapid fire build on the forged things that have a lot of hits per second um, it was very nice on energy spikes build but now energy spike uh, has been reworked on the mage to to have a cooldown, so you might want to um, consider some some weird uh, ways to, to, to build that with skills that have a lot of hits per second. Then we have uh, 8 legged allies, which allows you to summon 2 spiders uh, with a 40% chance when you kill a poisoned enemy. Then you can get another up to 50% chance, which makes the chance to 90% if you max this one out, and you can summon up to 10 more spiders, one spider per level, for a total of 12 spiders, so 95% chance, uh, actually no, 90% chance uh, and up to 12 spiders, pretty, pretty fun. And then when you reach level, I think, was that, so that's 5, uh, 10, 15, I think that's at level 20. Your miasma now spreads to enemies. That's either at, uh, at, at, um, at 20 or 25 or 30. I can't remember the exact level, but my guess is that unlocked at level 25, because I think I had it around that time. Uh, they kind of changed a lot of things that the relics have been reworked uh, multiple times already, based on community feedback. Uh, so that's how it is. And right now, the relic system is very intuitive because you can end up saving points in the first few levels like I did and put them here. You can save 5 points in the first 5 levels and when you get level 5 and unlock this you can invest into it. Before we had to spend 5 points in this one regardless on which one so we can get that one. Now we don't have to. Now we can do the 020-020 setup I always wanted and now it actually is not to level 40 but level 50 max so we can even have uh, um, some extra um, points to spare in the other ones. You can save 10 points and not invest into either of those and just um, boost this one to 10 points uh, immediately and just then keep maxing it out as well. So there are choices that you can make and that allows you some customization and that's, that's about the Bane. So I'm gonna talk shorter about the other relics because some of the things I set up white to every relic but now there's the Bud Drinker, and you can see each of those has uh, a different cooldown on the skills. This one is uh, right now with my uh, cooldown reduction gonna be 5.5 seconds uh, without the 50% here. This one is, is a basic 8 second. Uh, I think this one was a basic 10 second. I'm gonna quickly remove uh, the things that give me Relic Active skill cooldown. Um, but the thing is, uh, one, some of the things are on my build and it's not gonna show you the real numbers because, well, they're on my build as I said. Uh, so you can see this one, charge time 120 seconds, active time 30. Charge time 120, active time 30. Uh, it doesn't show me the charge time and the active time of those. But uh, I think this one has the, the least amount of active time. Um, uh, the least amount of charge time, but the same amount of active time. All of those have active time of 30 seconds, but the charge time uh, varies. And the cooldown of the Relic Active skill is different. This one is 6.4, with my current uh, reduction removed. This one is 12.8. Uh, so this one has the longest cooldown of them all. Uh, and uh, this one is uh, 8 seconds. And uh, this one is... Uh, 8 seconds. So this one with 8 seconds is probably 
uh, something that is actually maybe 10 seconds because I'm removing 20% of the cooldown so that would make, make it 8 but um, as I said there are certain things that have 8 seconds and that's gonna be the Bane and the Bot Drinker they have 8 seconds uh, and I'm removing 20% which makes it 6.4 and uh, what does that leave um, the code hard as? well 12.8 seconds that probably means this one is at 15 uh, per se a 15 second default cooldown so again you might want to consider which one to take let's quickly show you the abilities of all of them cold heart summons a snow storm around you that lasts for 8 seconds freezes enemies on contact and you gain chance to chew enemies for x seconds and chance to freeze enemies you hit uh, for x seconds you and your allies get 5% damage buff then you have the glacier that doesn't do much damage but uh, serves as an obstacle at the, until it melts. You might end up um, making life harder for you if you use it incorrectly. So keep in mind it would block you off as well and you can't uh, cancel it. Uh, uh, you can't remove the wall uh, manually until it's over. Freezing touch, the proc. Enemies you hit you have a chance to become frozen. So this goes well for a tanky build if you want to be proccing that. Uh, kind of underwhelming if you ask me but... Uh, but yeah, it's 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 a thing. It's a it's a build you can experiment with. For example, on a spin to win build or something. Then when you slay a chilled enemy, there is a 15% chance you summon an ice golem to find alongside you for 20 seconds. This would be nice if you could get a second golem to 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 fight once you unlock this one, and it would be nice if pet bonuses applied to this golem. Then you can use it on a on a pet build, and it would have been nice. You can increase the chance, you can increase the, the lifespan, you can kind of uh, see the bonuses that each of those can do. Again, for the active skills you can see it's always uh, damage and cooldown that you can do on those. And those ones on that side allows you to increase the chance to freeze enemies while it's active and um, uh, you now always critically hit frozen enemies or activate it and gain increased crit damage. So there's this one. Again, let's go back to the other ones. Um, the Blood Drinker, you can see, um, has Blood Frenzy, so you immediately deal 100% damage to the enemies around you. Uh, you cause them to bleed, uh, you get increased chance to bleed, uh, and your allies get a damage buff. You have a chance to get health on kill um, while this is active. For those 30 seconds, you have. Uh, uh, increased chance to bleed while this is active and again the then you have the spinning blade damage and cooldown as standard and you have rupture hitting a bleeding enemy has a 10% chance to make them explode for X weapon damage in a small area you can increase the chance to rupture or you can increase the damage then you have butt pulls Healing a bleeding enemy has a 15% chance to drop a blood pool which heals you for 5% of your total HP. You can heal for more uh, and that can be 55% of your total HP when maxed out. And you can also increase the chance to get blood pools from 15 to 40. So this could go well again with maybe some more melee, uh, melee builds like... Uh, like uh, AUE Master, Rail Master, or with a Spin to Win Cyclone uh, Forged, so something like that. And then this gets upgraded to your Blood Frenzy, now causes enemies hit by its initial bleed to rupture when it ends. So there's gonna be interesting builds with that one too. So a lot of synergies, and then there's Electrode. Uh, immediately fire Electric Shockwaves uh, from your location, dealing. Um, enemies X weapon damage and leaving them shocked for 8 seconds uh, gain 50% chance to shock for X weapon damage over 4 seconds you and your allies uh, within range gain 5% damage buff so shock chance can be increased while active and uh, crit chance uh, uh, can be increased while this is active as well then you have uh, again the active skill walk away storm those two small storms that move chaotically away from you, dealing X damage with a 25% chance to stun enemies, hit by the lightning. Again, damage cooldown you can get on those. Uh, then 
10% chance when you hit a shocked enemy to call down a lightning strike on them, dealing 100% weapon damage, chance to call down lightning when you hit a shocked enemy and so on. Lightning strike chance can be increased and then the additional strike now stuns enemies for one second uh, and uh, yeah there's a chance, there's a there's a, there's a duration to, to be added here. Now you have Violent Burst which uh, which you have 40% uh, chance to unleash shock on, on Q that deals X weapon damage and chance to fire bolts uh, of energy on Q uh, is 40% but you can increase that uh, with uh, with 25% more to 65 and then this one shock bolts on Q damage uh, you can get that damage increased then lingering charges on activation your electric shock wave now leaves small storms in their wake that deal 150% weapon damage over time and leave enemies shocked for 4 seconds pretty nice if you ask me and uh, what's left is the flaming destroyer so this one is another of the 10 second ones uh, rather than 8 seconds, so activating flaming destroy immediately slam enemies in front of you with the flaming sword to do certain damage, you gain chance to burn enemies for uh, another damage over 4 seconds, you and allies gain 25% inc increased damage for the duration of your relic activation. So if you're stacking uh, in your team someone with empowering smash uh, and then you get someone with, uh, with the bane uh, skill with the miasma you get 25 plus another 25 which is 50 percent total damage so the fire and the poison relics would be the ones that give the biggest damage buff for the for the allies during its duration the other ones are only five percent so keep that in mind then this can give you crit chance while it's active and this gives you chance to burn enemies on hit while it's active you have Sword Smash, summon an ethereal sword that slams into enemies in front of you, leaving them burning for 240 weapon damage uh, and uh, it has a duration of the burn of 6 seconds. You can increase the damage, you can decrease the cooldown. Magma Burst is amazing, when you hit a burning enemy there is a chance they will explode on hit for uh, weapon damage. For mobbing this is pretty nice, um, so you can use something like that. Uh, on a burning uh, build, uh, regardless whether it's spin to win or a melee realm master or a mage, uh, anything uh, can be good. Now you have lingering blaze, enemies who explode on hit leave behind burning hazard that deals 60% weapon damage over 4 seconds and bonus damage to lingering blaze can be added. Then you have fear of flames, enabling this passive gives magma burst the potential to fear enemies. Uh, I don't think this is really great to invest into if you want the enemies to be nearby, if you want to be the tank keeping the enemies together. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that, but uh, someone might want to make a fear build. But the fear makes them scatter and it's harder to kill feared enemies. But if you want survivability, you can fear them, that means you're not taking damage. So there are uses for fear as well in certain cases. Then Firestorm is amazing. Uh, on hit there is a chance a fireball will drop on enemies for 40% weapon damage, which is kind of like a meteor dropping on them, uh, but just a single one, not a whole storm. Um, straight on their heads like a cartoon dropping anvil on someone's head, that kind of nice animation. And you can increase uh, the chance by 0.5% so you can get 5% more chance um, so yeah right now it's 6% but you can get it to 11% it has a cooldown so it can proc all the time but you can increase the damage so instead of 40 you can make it 90% actually you can make it 140% damage my bad 140% damage and then there's Rain of Fire, which uh, makes it rain fireballs. It makes it like a meteor storm, meteor shower uh, around you on the whole screen uh, while this is active. So that's kind of how that works. Uh, and that's it for the relics. I think it was clear. I think the information was uh, necessary and enough to all of you. And next we can move on to the next segment where we talk about pets and pet skills.
Uh, regarding how you craft the relics, you need something called Ember Cores and you get those by killing certain bosses. Little bosses, big bosses, uh, named enemies, things like White Vault, uh, things like Strong Tusk, uh, Kronk, etc. Uh, so you can be farming Phase Beast maps as well, those have different bosses as well. Or you can just go to the zone where the boss spawns and uh, keep killing it. And eventually it can drop you those uh, cores. One relic... Uh, needs uh, 24 of those cores eventually there's something called contracts that is getting rework which will return to the game which also can reward you things like respectacles and uh, and ember cores and uh, scrolls of unbinding and other goodies like resources for crafting and so on so keep that in mind you need 24 cores to craft a new relic and then you can just transfer it in between characters if you want to and in this segment i will talk about pets pet skills and uh, how they uh, work into a build. So in general you're gonna notice that most people would be using things like deadly strikes, 15% increased crit chance to you and nearby allies. But if you're in a team you cannot stack that over twice which means if you're in a team one of you better change to something else so you can stack more overs and if you have five uh, if you have four people in a party and uh, the pet has four different overs that means every person can switch to a different aura like the 25% defense the 10% block chance regardless whether you use a shield or not uh, and the 15% movement speed and the 15% crit chance and you can in a team of 4 stack all 4 auras you can use only one aura uh, on your pet at a time so 4 pets with 4 different auras gives you access to all of them you might uh, want to consider uh, how you're building. Are you building defensively? Uh, do you want to stack block chance? Uh, and mind you, block chance is limited to 40. So if you if you are just uh, a few percent under uh, 40, you probably might not want to be using that. Uh, do you want to get that um, damage buff uh, every 30 seconds for 10 seconds? Do you want to be getting uh, this damage resistance? For, 30, uh, for 10 seconds every 30 seconds, you want to make your pet root en enemies um, every now and then, you want the pet to be stunning enemies every now and then, uh, you kind of have to decide uh, how you want to build, there's the necro pupper which might be fun for summoner builds, uh, then uh, the pet can also be vampiric and then there's the healing friendship as well and then there's pass the gas which goes well with poison builds so there is a little bit of customization eventually i'm thinking the developers would expand upon this idea they've said it multiple times they have many ideas of how this uh, system can evolve uh, but uh, time time is needed time is really needed when it comes to developing and uh, adding new things so for now we only have those uh, 12 things but uh, eventually probably more skills would be coming before the launch if not before the launch definitely after the launch we would be seeing some sort of improvements and uh, maybe even again reworks of that system and the interface this interface works fine but it would need to change if they add more skills maybe expand it uh, one more um, one more row or maybe add something that allows us to scroll maybe something like the legendarium where we scroll up and down things like that but yeah that's not that much customization and right now it doesn't matter what pet you get let me talk about how you get pets first you get pets from pet cages after defeating certain bosses behind them there will be pet cages and you get uh, to choose do you want to put this uh, pet uh, in place of your current pet and your current pet goes to the to the pet shelter in your in your fort if you don't have a pet shelter when you build one it will be there already uh, or do you want to put it in the pet shelter without swapping your current pet or do you want to just release it into the wild uh, and releasing it into the wild means you're never gonna see that pet again so if you want a certain skin uh, if you want uh, uh, if you want a certain skin you can keep collecting pets uh, and if you no longer want something you can just cancel it uh, that's kind of how it is you can randomize the names so you can get rid of things you don't need so you can do something like that one release this pet boom it's gone uh, so yeah it, it is entirely up to you how you wanna do it and basically different pets would just mean different skins it's not like one pet uh, 
would uh, would come with uh, that one skin every time. It's completely random. When you capture a pet, it gives you a randomly generated skin. A cat, a dog, a chakawari, which is this little little lizardy glitch, uh, lizard swash. Uh, not lizard, but it's like a, between a between a bird uh, and and a dinosaur, which I, I would call a lizard, but yeah. It's kind of like a weird thing, like a mixture between a dinosaur and a bird, the Chakawari. It's pretty nice, uh, pretty weird. And then you have Drakelings uh, like this one. Uh, I'm gonna try and show you if I can uh, swap. So there's the Drake link. Oh, we can just select them here. See, that's, that's probably the better option to show you the different skins. Um, so there's many skins you can collect, some skins are rarer, you can see this one is white, so common, um, uh, this one is green, so uh, magic, uh, this one is rare, and you also have legendary ones, which I think was the, uh, the, the red drake link might be one of those, so it doesn't matter what, uh, what rarity it is, you can always use it as a skin and then equip the skills you want, and when it generates a pet, it also randomly generates a skill that the pet comes with, but it's completely random, it's not like uh, this pet always comes with that skill, so sometimes you are gonna be lucky and get uh, things like the crit chance, or uh, other times you're gonna get things that you already have, such as uh, uh, this skill, uh, battle cry, or some of the easier things to get, like defensive postures. Um, but sometimes you might get rare stuff like healing friendship or necro pupper. So, RNG, not the best thing, but it is nice. Uh, still, the way they've done it, they they made the harder to get pet skills a little bit more accessible. Uh, I can tell you, I used to grind so much for deadly strikes. I've now gotten it. Uh, within the past two days on three characters probably three four times total so not so bad not so bad and i think that's pretty much it uh, regarding the pet system next uh, let's talk about uh, the forts and other things uh, fort adjacent this brings us to forts there's so much to talk about forts and i'm going to be making a different video on forts specifically i'm going to try to be brief here about forts so you get certain items so for example there's collectible items like world wide world ceremonial shield you kill it enough times eventually he's gonna drop it and then you can place those items uh, in your uh, fort for example, I can take this uh, shield here and I can rotate it uh, and I can place it wherever I see fit. Like here for example. You have a lot of different things like a range decoration which also has sub layers, sub uh, categories. Then you have functional which is things that you might need to do certain tasks. Um, you have uh, monuments uh, which I can talk in a moment. Then you have uh, skill stations. Uh, which uh, are used to respect your classes every class has one of those and then you have on the storage the pet shelter and you have wardrobes wardrobes some of those wardrobes you get as rewards from certain places others you have to craft yourself and you also need gold to 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 place them and uh, more about wardrobes in a moment so first under a range you have things like trees uh, and so on uh, and there's also a store all button so when you start you might want to use the store all button to get rid of all the things uh, but then you have things like um, those stones that's some that's some stones that you can place in in the um, in the fort something uh, just like pavement so that's just an example let's show you what happens you can use it like that rotate just place it however you see fit and just decorate uh, the base in a way that you think uh, is suitable it's definitely a nice touch, you can do a lot of it when you rotate it and it's just some sort of a pattern that you can see. It's always the same but when you, you rotate it you kind of uh, make a little bit of uh, changes to, to how you might want to combine it and, and yeah you can kind of make it like a puzzle if you want to. So that's not a bad thing to have uh, in your fort and to use it. Uh, then you start with things like that with the cozy campfire, you might want to put it somewhere, you might want to put some um, some cozy campfire next to this guy to keep him warm. You start with some things like a stool, because this guy needs to sit somewhere, he's always uh, standing there grounded, he might need uh, a place to stay. So that's some of the things that you start with. 
and that's the things in your fourth inventory that you already own but if you want to buy new ones then you might want to build this thing see that's a statue of the mana guardian and you might want to place this nice thing here for everyone to see and the mighty mana guardian keeper of the fort there's nice things there's easy open hatch because uh, well in the easy open hatch you can do some nice things you can stash your booze there for all you know so you can craft it if you have money i don't i don't have 200 gold to craft it but you you would be able to if you have to you can buy stuff you can see a bench a stool trees there's all sorts of decorations and there are so many more that we don't have here that would be unlocked uh, when the contracts gets added more about contracts and what they are in the in the last minutes of the video you could check the the timestamps uh, if you want to skip through some of the things you don't want to hear um, so yeah tents and all of that there's a lot of things you can add there's a uh, this cemetery gate there's uh, fences and whatever else you might uh, think of there's weird stuff and there's so much more stuff that you don't see here uh, then on functional you have things like the reliquary enchanters altar those are must have buildings part of uh, tutorials you have sawmill which turns uh, wood into like planks i'm probably not using the correct uh, terms and this one smelts uh, iron into iron bars um, and this one makes stones into bricks so let's show you how to use the stone mason quickly i, I only have the stone mason i haven't farmed much of those resources uh, not a big fan of it but i've got some stones and i've got 222 and you can see each stone rock is a half of a block so you need two stone rocks for every block and then you decide how many you might want to craft and based on how many you're crafting at once uh, it takes longer you can see 48 is the max you can make uh, into 24 so you're making 24 stone blocks and that uh, that would take a minute uh, so we can just chill and it would let us know when there's stuff it would give us an icon and uh, you can uh, as you see kind of rotate stuff the way you want to this thing I'm, I'm gonna show you in a moment would be the wardrobe a very interesting system one could use but uh, with the wardrobe I'm gonna have to switch to another hero for the next segment which we will so yeah you can customize it uh, to, to your heart's content this is such a nice uh, time killer I mean you're gonna end up uh, either barely spending any time in the fort or spending shit loads of time if you're the person that really enjoys it there's also the middle ground people like me that probably just uh, get the basic buildings and eventually when they have free time end up making weird forts but um, at the start kind of don't focus much on it but i've had times where i would spend on my stream during the alpha phase uh, i would spend like uh, an hour two hours just redecorating uh, everything from scratch so you can see this one is kind of weirdly rotated uh, it was uh, in the opposite direction now we have it in the proper direction and so on so now let's talk about fort adjacent things and i'm gonna quickly switch to to my other character to show you about wardrobes and here we are on my other characters to talk about uh, wardrobes a little bit so this one is for the sharpshooter as you can see, this one is for the disc mage, this one is for the forged uh, disc mage, disc mage hardcore. So they, they made special um, special wardrobes that we can only use on hardcore characters because hardcore characters don't share storage with uh, our other characters which of course is uh, normal and standard in this genre in those games this is realm master and so on you would be unlocking more of those i unlocked this by finding it as a drop somewhere as a design and you would be getting a lot of those different uh, new designs from various activities like contracts and again more about contracts at the end of the video you might want to check uh, the description if you want to skip to it so yeah you get those from different places whether it's uh, from boss drops from unnamed monster drops or whatever eventually you're gonna be unlocking uh, all sorts of different weird storage uh, and then what you do with the storages with the storage statues is you kind of place it and then you can access it and you can either put all your items in it or take all the items from it it can be female or male 
uh, apart from the forged, uh, which I don't think has any genders attached to it. Uh, and yeah, you can just quickly swap between it or you can just put one piece or take away one piece uh, and replace it whatever you've got. Uh, and you can also put things from your inventory inside it and then you can see those things equipped on the statue. You can see how things kind of change when you equip it. It's still kind of like a, like a silhouette, so it, it is kind of um, silhouette-ish, so keep that in mind. But uh, you can take the things back if you want to and yeah, it kind of, you see, changes the, the design. But it's very nice how with the weapons you see the glow and everything and it's colorful, whereas with the armors it's still um, retaining uh, the design. It's, it's also based on what the statue is. Let's go to the other one. You can see the other one looks slightly different, different type of material, but as soon as I switch that, I think that's a bug. They, they used to use, uh, this, uh, they used to be the same. Now it kind of is not rendering, I think it's not rendering the armors now because you see it's showing you those meshes, unrendered meshes. That might be a bug just to this design because normally that's not happened to me before. But yeah we just found a bug, uh, if a dev is watching this uh, yeah be advised about that one, I'm gonna report it later in note. So that's kind of how those work, that's an extra piece of storage and even if your storage space here gets kind of uh, to be un unsatisfactory big um, but you can lock more of those stash tabs so keep that in mind. Even if you don't have enough stash tab here you can make uh, so many more uh, wardrobes that you can end up filling the whole fort with wardrobes if you want to. Yes they do have limits, some items do have limits like for example um, this one has a limit of only one item that you can place uh, and with the storage you can place no more than two of these, two of these, two of these. So certain things are limited to two of those but there's as I said many more different uh, types of, uh, of storage statues you can use. So, so yeah, a lot of storage for everyone. I'm so happy with that change. I think this kind of is it for this uh, segment. So next I want to talk about other fort related things like uh, the enchanting and recipes, the tree of work and the monuments. First let's go to enchanting and recipes. So how does one enchant stuff? Well, you enchant stuff by creating an enchanter's altar uh, here in the fort under functional you make this. There's a quest that makes you make one so eventually you will have it uh, created. Then you get here and uh, you get decent recipes, different recipes already unlocked and then you can unlock more recipes by finding them. Basically if you've already known the recipe uh, it would tell you but if you don't you can click on it and it would immediately it would immediately put it into into the the recipe list. If you if you don't own it you can also use that thing and it would tell you that it unlocked the recipe by just uh, salvaging it and getting uh, it broken down. I've noticed that this works, I'm not sure whether it's intended, but salvaging a recipe that I don't know gives me the materials but also the recipe, so it might be the better option. You can also sell those for 30 or 60 based on how rare it is. Uh, and you can see this one and this one are both 60, but this one breaks down for blue, this one for green. Maybe that's a bug, maybe it isn't. Uh, but yeah, you can just break them down if you've already known them and you get essences. And you can also get essences by breaking down items, like for example this uh, this item. Let's, let's break it down just to show you. Boom, magic essence. This one would give me blue essence uh, if I wanted to. And and uh, then with those essences we take an item that can be enchanted like this one and we have for each type of item we have different recipes that can apply. So for example let's say we're gonna be fighting Hivit, we would want that poison defense or, or if you want gear work we can get any of that. But since uh, you can't just go for gear work or you can go just for general defense, you pick do you want uh, the chance to get uh, goblin stuff? Uh, Hivit stuff or do you want to get uh, Ekunok uh, Voltura stuff uh, which is Actress, Enemies and uh, Biome. So let's say we want Hivit things, we get to enchant the item and then we can disenchant it if we want to. Uh, the price we pay is based I think on the item rarity. 
So for green item is 500, for legendary I think it's 1000, for blue 750. You see we enchanted this three times and if you want to we can disenchant it and try again or we can just keep what we've got. Uh, so that's pretty much it, uh, I, I'm not gonna go into detail but you can see some of the recipes that, uh, that you have unlocked. Uh, and when you click on an item to enchant you can also see the other ones that uh, that are not highlighted as well but the ones that you can use would be here would be highlighted here so there is that uh, there seems to be a little bug here x uh, uh, out of x not showing the exact number but again this is early access so there will be roughness uh, every now and then in different places so uh, that's it about uh, the enchanting. Uh, I think uh, I, you don't need much more information than that. If you do, feel free to ask me. Next, let's talk about other things in the fort, such as the Tree of Work. Here we are at the Tree of Work, uh, which is uh, it starts from a little sapling and grows into a nice majestic tree. Um, so mine is at level 3, it goes all the way to level 5 and the way you grow it is you or other people who are visiting your fort regardless whether they're randomly teleported uh, to your fort by, by traveling in between um, the different passages or, or just visiting your fort uh, by them being in your party and through your portal or teleporting to you while you're there they can give items and based on what item you give the tree you get uh, different points uh, i i wish i would see the number of points needed for each level but you get different points based on the rarity you see green item is 18 points uh, this one is 56 points and those points are like experience experience to grow the tree i'm not sure what the official name is and then you can see a legendary item is 668 so it doesn't matter what level it is it matters what rarity it is and as you feed it, you get uh, um, you get that boost, uh, you get that leveled up, and then boom, you do this, and you get more points. And if someone else is in your fort, they can get a, a buff for 300 seconds, which I think should be six or 900 seconds. Uh, they get a gear work buff, and based on what item they donated and the rarity of the item, they get different percent on that buff. 9%, 6%, maybe 12%, and I think it goes up to 15 maybe with the legendary percent gear work. Um, but 300 seconds definitely doesn't seem like long enough. And where you can encounter other people's forts, that's all those passages, all those in-between zones. So you can just teleport to one of those if you want the work bonus and then, and then you're gonna get it. So there are things you can get. Okay, um, I think that's pretty clear about the Tree of Work. Next I'm gonna talk about something else, which is the monuments. And uh, here they are. I'm gonna keep them in the same segment. So uh, yeah, the monuments are something that you build again from the fort, the same way as the Tree of Work. Uh, quests uh, give you the Tree of Work, but monuments you kind of have to make yourself. So if you go here to to monuments under functional you have one for each frontier this is for the goblin this is for the vulture uh, third frontier this is for the hivit but even if we don't have act 3 we still fight automatons so we can still kind of get gizmos uh, from them basically as you fight enemies you get certain resource from goblins you get goblin fury as you kill goblins they drop it and then you offer it as you kill hivit you get hivit paste and then you can just put it in there into into that as an offering and as you keep donating certain resources this uh, gives you more points and it levels up and you start from 1% poison defense uh, or goblin defense or um, this one which is the the gold work instead of a defense type you start from 1% you, you go all the way to 5% it may not seem like much but it adds up especially at the high levels when you're having thousands of defenses um, those percentages there would actually um, add up to a very nice number so it's pretty simple nothing uh, too too difficult about understanding it you can see they grow and change visually the same way the tree grows so I hope this is clear enough and uh, next uh, we can move into about gathering materials and crafting. 
The first thing about crafting is people might think, oh, I can craft items, yeah, good job. No, you can't craft items, but what you can craft is you can craft resources like the ones uh, I made earlier. You can craft stone blocks. You can see I can make a stone block quickly and you can you can use those stone blocks and other things just to, to craft certain things. You, you have to claim them before you can make a new one, as you can see. So those stone blocks and all the other things you can make um, would be seen here in the resources tab. You see the resources you use as base and you see the resources you get. Uh, you can also get those without crafting from wooting different things if you're lucky. So the wood walk goes into sacred hardwood. The, the, the stone goes into stone block. Oh, never mind. The, the the metal nugget goes into tin, the the stone rock goes into stone block, and the wood block uh, goes into something like planks. Uh, I don't have the exact resource to show you, but I can show you what it looks like in the in this section here. So this is it. It costs uh, wood blocks uh, refined to wood planks, and. Uh, and the metal should be refined into... Uh, I'm not sure where to show you. There is definitely a place somewhere where I can show you. I just have to find it. I have to find it. But you use th those crafted materials to craft things for your fort. For some sort of decoration, some sort of storage. All, all sorts of things like that. You can craft them. Um, and you can see it's pretty pretty nice. But in general you get... Uh, you get planks, you get blocks, you get bricks and so on. There's three tiers of resources. So tier one would be wood, metal and stone. Tier two would be the planks, the stone blocks and the, and the tin bars, iron bars. And then you can get uh, sacred hardwood from gathering or from wooting certain things as, or getting them as drops from certain enemies, uh, which is tier three in the wood segment. And then tier uh, tier 3 uh, in the stone segment would be the comet fragment and there is another tier 3 which I don't own right now uh, to show you but yeah that's uh, that you can get rarely mined from from rocks or from killing certain enemies that might drop them like golems so the metal one uh, unfortunately you're gonna have to find yourself or see some some old footage uh, of but yeah that's kind of it those three tiers you use to craft stuff so you go into this interface you pick what you want to make you get the money you want you get the materials you want you make them from smelting or from the stone ma mason or or from the sawmill and and then you just buy whatever you want and then you place it in the inventory um, the way you want to place it. So, yeah, pretty much a lot of good stuff that you can do. And it's all optional how you how you will approach it. And, uh, and I hope everyone kind of understands this. If you have more questions about that system, feel free to ask those. So you can see you can unlock some recipes uh, that you may not have found otherwise and you might want to craft those too. But I think uh, that's clear. I think that's clear. Next we're going to move on to talking a bit about things um, that are to come in the game. If I've missed some things, if you want to know more about other things that I didn't talk to, uh, let me know in the comments. But let's talk about Act 3, about the Fazir Shah's dungeon and about uh, the contract system, which uh, would be coming eventually before the game launches throughout this early access phase. So let's talk about Act 3, Econoc Mountains. You can see the map already uh, being available for you and we were able to play it uh, during the last days of Alpha and through the whole course beta. We were able to play it, to test it, to give feedback uh, on it. And you know, the last 10% of something uh, when it comes to game development are always the hardest 10% and they always uh, kind of uh, take the longest uh, time. So maybe it was 90% ready and then now they're polishing those last 10%. But uh, extra are known to want things to be good enough, to want things to be well done and they take our feedback to heart so um, 
yeah, it's not available, you can't play it right now, um, but I I can tell you it is a fun frontier. You're fighting in some sort of peaky mountains that end up leading you to different forts, and those forts have been occupied by those uh, bird-like uh, robotic creatures, the Votura, which you can see on some types of uh, concept art. Um, and uh, you again, like the other frontiers, would be going from one zone to a passageway to another zone to a passage uh, uh, or uh, in this case scavengers trail here where you're kind of going off a bit. Uh, but eventually, uh, without uh, spoiling and revealing too much, eventually you reach a, a boss fight, a big boss fight. And um, since we've seen in the first and second uh, without spoiling for anyone uh, new we've seen in the first and second some sort of uh, relation between the boss fights the end of act boss fights uh, i'm not gonna say names review uh, background story but i'm gonna say that they're related uh, in one way or another so it's probably pretty safe to guess that uh, another boss that's related to the first two and you probably once you play the first act you would already know who that might be uh, it's at the end of this act and probably at the end of act 4 which might be coming post launch if it's coming I mean I'm pretty sure that eventually they're gonna be pumping new acts as expansions but that's probably post launch experience but back on the Econoc mountains uh, it's been occupied by dwarves some time ago and I think uh, it got infested by the Votura, by those mechanical creatures, maybe the dwarves made them, I cannot tell, I don't know the exact war behind it, but those Votura are some sort of mechanical creatures that kinda um, also have automatons, it's not just the flying bird-like mechanical creatures, but also those automatons like that look like this, or like little uh, robots uh, with spider legs and so on, that uh, can pew 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 and spew uh, things at you. It is fun, it's definitely nice uh, and uh, looks amazing and it's typically in the um, Torchlight uh, art style, in the Torchlight 3 art style. So you're probably gonna love it, I know I did. Um, so be on the lookout for this. Before, before anything happens, uh, with the end game they will be adding this and when they add this one, they would also be adding the contract system and that brings us to the contract system some months ago when um, when it was revealed uh, it was in one stage then it got changed it got pulled back to get reworked and uh, it was uh, better and different and then they decided to change from Torchlight Frontiers to Torchlight 3 and the contract system got reworked in such a way where it was even more rewarding, it felt even better and it didn't have that uh, free to play game design uh, within it. Before it was probably gonna be something like a battle pass uh, at first where you would have probably people who, who don't pay for it getting one rewards and the others getting extra rewards but that's gone, that's no longer there. You what is actually the battle pass how does it work you kill enemies you kill champions uh, all sorts of champions like uh, the purple ones the elites the green ones which are the uniques and the yellow ones which are the legendary ones and then you get fame you kill bosses like named monsters end of map bosses uh, act bosses you also get fame and this fame gets you levels so reach a certain number of fame you get a level and that level is a contract level and that contract level would reward you something it could be a little bit of gold it could be a little bit of uh, planks or or stone bricks it could give you respectacles to respect your skills it could give you scrolls of unbinding which are for uh, for unbinding uh, wife bound items you can get other good things uh, such as uh, uh, special decorations, special wardrobes, uh, and so on. There's a lot of things you can get, and there were different types of uh, different types of contracts that focus on different types of rewards. Some of them would be more focused on materials and crafting. Others would be more focused on uh, uh, character growth, respects, and all of that. So it was a very nice system and uh, it is said that it will be coming back when they add act 3 and it will be unlocked once you reach act 3 those are just uh, rumors that those are things that have been circulating the official discord but i've got them from sources that uh, do have some insider information so maybe maybe it is um, it is true what i just said but take it with a grain of salt uh, if you'd like 
So I think that's pretty much clear about contracts. Um, if it wasn't, feel free to ask more questions and I can try and get you some more info. Now the other thing that we saw on the welcome screen is something called Fazir Shah's Dungeon. And I do have some information about this but I cannot reveal much. Uh, I can only reveal that, well, uh, what has been revealed already. You know that it's gonna be some endgame activity, you know that it's gonna be something that's coming from the welcome screen and you see that there's some sort of a gin like creature so basically this is the system that is replacing the old map works it is great it is nice it's not entirely unique but it is unique it's i mean it's very hard to to tell that something hasn't been done already but i can tell you uh, this in the way it is done hasn't been done yeah it might feel like the end game activities you see in other games but it also has its own take on it and that's what's important because um, you're not uh, finding hot water here, you're not discovering America, you're not Columbus uh, it's super hard to be Columbus uh, nowadays in this genre where almost everything has been done but um, it's a nice distinguishingly endgame activity that you would be able to do to level up uh, post story and uh, look forward to it uh, be patient if you don't like playing early access games well just uh, wait for the game when it launches or when it at least starts the end game activities um, uh, what i do have fears of is that it may not be enough only having one end game activity and hopefully before launch they, they consider uh, working on something else, even if it's uh, scaling of the enemies in the in the story mode. So once we complete the story to our level, so we can go back and farm those. Even if they add some sort of bounty system like Diablo 3, I mean, something something that we can do in those zones uh, because once we've out leveled them, we don't get XP there. And we can do farming for face beasts, but we're farming all level enemies that don't give us XP to get those face beasts to spawn. And then the face beast is just a few seconds, a minute of a fight of a boss, and then uh, it's not gonna be that much XP. Yes, it will give us wife bound rewards and so on. But still, I think they should consider at least doing this once we com once we complete the story to allow us to do the story zones, uh, but them scaling to our level. Even that, uh, before adding another endgame activity, would allow for some more stuff to do in the game. Even in the current state, uh, it would be pretty perfect to, to be able to reach level 60 that way. So, that's kind of it. As, as I said, I can't review too much about this, uh, but uh, I'm sure many of you would love it. Some of you may not uh, think it's too original, but I personally think it's... It's at the same time original yet uh, still feeling familiar and being easy to get used to and uh, and just uh, jump right into. I certainly hope this guy, even though it was such a long whopper of a guide, uh, uh, proved to be useful to some of you folks out there. Uh, if you wanna get notified for more content about this game or others like it or various different types of uh, RPGs, say RPGs, tactical RPGs, all sorts of RPGs or uh, other types of looters, uh, uh, you could subscribe to my channel, get uh, that bell button click to, to not miss those notifications. Thanks again for watching the video folks, uh, keep it cool and until next time, uh, goodbye.